In writing a book that, that I published on ERVs, I went through a, a virology lecture series and I thought it was really good. The, the virologist suggested that infectious retroviruses, like exogenous retroviruses, likely evolve from LTR retrotransposons, so long terminal repeat retrotransposons. And it got me thinking, okay, and I'm curious as to your thoughts, because we have some challenges in the live chat where they say, well, how do you explain polymorphic ERVs? We, we kind of did earlier, but maybe to elaborate a little bit. Um, if we're arguing based on the functional nature of a lot of these ERVs that we have both created ERVs and then true ERVs after the flood, well, if various classes of these retrotransposons were front loaded and created at the beginning with functional purposes, but then after the flood, these massive negative shifts in environment result in more infectious viruses moving from one organism to another, burning hot and fast. These foreign, uh, these hosts with the foreign viruses can't regulate the, the viral infections. Okay, so what if, yeah, a lot of these harmful viruses did evolve after the fall, especially after the flood, came from host genomes or host cells or pre-existing retrotransposons, and then spread to, to other organisms, and then we have some polymorphic ERVs. Okay, fine, but what's the issue? I feel like we can explain both, and do you feel the same way? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Reason? Immediately what I'm thinking about here initially is that I'm not aware of an ERV that isn't RNA-based, and every mm -hmm. RNA-based genome out there for a virus when they have the RNA-dependent RNA polymerases, none of them have any proofreading mechanisms, uh, to the best of my knowledge. I mean, I could be wrong, but, I mean, if, it, if there are any that are out there, it's a very, very short list, because on the whole, only the DNA-dependent RNA polymerases or DNA-dependent DNA polymerases have any kind of editing activity or proofreading mechanism, the DNA-dependent DNA polymerase in particular. And so, as a result, then, if you're talking in the RNA world and mutation rates, well, of course, there's going to be polymorphisms. Like, why not? I think the better question to ask is, how does the flu stay as one strand in one season because it doesn't have any proofreading mechanism? Like, mm. what's keeping that in place? Like, I have no mm. idea. Nobody does. We have had the sequence for that guy for a long time. There's eight segments. And we know what each nucleotide is all about, basically, right? And there's still not a clue. I'm just scratching my head, like, and that's in real time. That's like right now, right this year, like, you know, uh, we're facing it at the height of flu season, you know? So I, I don't, there's, there is no way to, uh, to, to say that there, there should be these specific lineages. In fact, I would expect to see a really high mutation rate. I mean, that's kind of what we see with the flu or it mutates as fast as it does, you right. know, and Rob Carter published that paper that said uh, very clearly how, um, uh, the uh, the 1918 influenza just over mutated into extinction. You know, 